Well, hello, Lilia. Thank you so much for being willing to join me to talk about this really great new technique that you have been testing out called SiteConsec. Hello, Josh. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about this. As am I. This is something that I've been talking about and thinking about for a long time, but you've actually put it into practice. So it's great to um, see that it's working. Uh, why don't we start, though, by telling telling the people who are listening a little bit about you. So um, who are you? What kind of work do you do? Where are you based? What languages do you work with? Okay, so my name is Lilia Pino Bluang, and I am Italian and also American. And I work with um, Italian, French, and Spanish into English, and um, in, from English into Italian. I'm based in New York, and I freelance 100 percent and i do a lot of work for the film industry and for film festivals with um italian french and spanish into english and then i work for the italian mission at the un whenever uh there are italian delegations visiting uh the UN headquarters in new york the technique we're talking about is a an approach, uh, a twist on using speech recognition for interpreting purposes. So I thought maybe I'd start by asking you, how did you get interested in speech recognition? I saw that you had a specific course on Tech Forward on ASR, automatic uh, speech recognition, and I figured it would be a great um, primer on, um, on on how to use this in, in, in my interpreting practice, and it was. <laughs> That's great. And you've done all sorts of experimentation with different speech recognition tools to figure out which ones worked best for your languages. So maybe in a few words, which ones which ones do you like most? Which have you tried? Which ones have you settled on? So um, for English, Otter uh, AI, for sure, that works really well. It's it's shocking. And I think the first time I tried it, well, I you know, during the pandemic, um, the former New York governor Cuomo uh, was giving press conferences every day and they were really interesting. And I was glued to the screen every morning. And uh, because I was listening to them for personal reasons, I figured, well, why don't I use it for practice? You know, since I'm home and I have nothing else to do. And so every day I got together a group of friends in Italy who were interested and over Skype and over, you know, WebEx, they were listening to me interpreting it into Italian. And so so I thought, oh, why don't I combine it with um, speech recognition training? And so I used the method that you describe in your course to set up my MacBook Pro uh, through loopback to transcribe on Otter what Cuomo was saying. And basically, I started practicing with what you now call uh, site consec. And uh, I thought it was brilliant, brilliant, because, you know, Otter transcribed everything. It transcribed all the numbers. It transcribed, um, you know, all the names, of, you know, complicated names of institutions and even personal names. I mean, often they were not accurate, but at least they were phonetic. So even I would do the same thing. You know, it's, if I didn't know the name of the person that Como mentioned, I had, you know, what can you do? You just repeat it phonetically. And that's what Otter does. And it was fine. It was in a lot. Of, it was, I mean, you know, of course it's not perfect and we'll go into more detail later, but it took a lot of getting used to, but I thought it was awesome. And then. So, in so wait, let me just check. You didn't yeah. have to train the tool at all. No, nothing. I you nothing. literally just connected it up, which takes yeah. about two minutes to do, and then hit a button and it started transcribing. Yeah. yeah. I guess, you know, Cuomo speaks pretty clearly and relatively slowly, and uh, he enunciates very well. It was perfect. It, cool. it really, I was so impressed. And so tell me about for your for your other languages, what so you're for using, my, because otter.i is limited to English. I settled on Web Captioner. And uh, you, on Web Captioner, you can go and set the language and you can even set the specific varieties. Like for French, you can do Quebec French or, or France French. And for Spanish, you have uh, you know, many alternatives. And uh, it was great. And I use it a lot for all three Latin. I, I work with Italian, French and Spanish, mostly with Italian and just the same thing. No training. And it works really well. It just, it has everything I need. 
you know? I mean, every now and then there will, there will be a word that is sort of not accurate, but let's say 5%. Normally I would do it with nothing. So every 95% <laughs> versus, versus, you know, nothing is great. Absolutely. Really great. And of course, we're not, we're not arguing that this should replace interpreters in any oh, way. We're, uh, we're arguing that this can be a great tool to help you uh, be more accurate. And well, you can tell, tell us about some of the benefits in just a second. But first, I want to dive right in to a real world experience that you recently had. Uh, you've been testing this technique, you've been practicing with it, which is very important. You don't want to just dive into the deep end and do it. But once you felt comfortable, you asked one of your clients if you could just go ahead and use speech recognition for an actual assignment. Tell us uh, about how it went and what the assignment um, was like. It was a literary event. It was a, um, a book prize. It's called The Bridge. And, you know, this, this organization that pays for translations of American writers into Italian and Italian writers into English. And they were you know, celebrating the winners of last year's edition. And they had a lot of people speaking and I noticed, and it was on Zoom, and I noticed that a lot of people were going on and on and on for a long time. And they were saying a lot of, you know, it was very information dense. And so I, and I had my whole setup ready because I used it for practice. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to have this transcribed and see how it goes because this is going to be insane otherwise. And I figured, again, that because it was a public event, I didn't really need to have permission because I wasn't doing anything. You know, this would have been open on the web anyway. And so I set it up as, as you know, somebody else was speaking. I kind of, you know, I you know, tog toggled on all my commands on, on loopback. And I, um, and the, you know, did it mostly, no, only probably only from Italian into English. So I had web captioner on and I started, you know, taking notes, but at the same time, reading my uh, text and doing my site translation. And it was brilliant, brilliant. You know, it was, it saved my life. It really did. And so the event was an hour and I went on for the whole hour doing it. And I felt it really saved the day. That's so, yeah. so great to hear. And I think actually a lot of the first times we try things, it, you might even try it as a backup. You might realize you want to give it a shot and see how it goes. Obviously, you'd been practicing it. So it wasn't, it wasn't a problem. You were still able to use your traditional skills of note taking and working in traditional consec if needed. But you realized that this actually proved quite helpful. So yeah. uh, I'm curious, did you act, did you take notes as you were doing it? Yes, that's the thing. I mean, because I didn't really trust the technology and I mean, I knew that it's reliable because I'd done it a million times before for practice, but you never know, you know, technology has this uh, magical ability to let you down when you least expect it. And so I figured, yeah, I will take notes. And, uh, you know, first I thought, you know what, I will still rely on my notes and then just look at it in case there's something I'm I'm not sure about. And then I had my notes, but my notes were so so less, so much less accurate than my text there. So I thought, you know what? And these people I know because I've worked with them many times before. They really like for you to say everything. It's not, you know, I'm sure. All of you have been in this situation, depending on the client. Some clients actually kind of like it when you do consect and you leave something out because they want to save time. These people, because it's a literary event, they really care about the language and they really wanted to have everything. I, I knew they appreciated that. So, you know, I had my notes and then I was like reverting back to my text the whole time. So sure enough, at one point when I noticed that they that everything was working, my notes were really minimal, it was they were really just in case there was an epic fail, I still could say something. But yeah. So actually my my whenever I can do it formally now for like for film festivals, I still I still take I, I guess the, the short answer would be I still take notes to be on the safe side. Because I'm human, I get lazy. And when I see it works, <laughs> my notes, you know, 
are a little useless at the end of the day. Yeah. What kind of gear do you need? Do you need anything more than you would need for standard remote interpreting? I operate in the Apple world. So in terms of the computer, it's the very same computer I would use for standard RSI. So one computer, not multiple devices. One computer. No, I just use one computer. So you, of course, you have a headset, you have a camera because you're going to be on video sometimes, not always. And the only things that are different is you're routing the sound into Web Captioner or Otter.ai, and you've got a, a window open where you're seeing the transcription. Other than that, Absolutely. everything nothing, looks nothing normal. else. Other than that, everything is normal. So Great. it's zero. Literally, setting this up is the easiest thing in the world because your course is very hands-on and very specific, and you really have literally a step-by-step guide and it says step one this step two that step three that so i the very first time i followed it to the letter i set up this um software called loopback that you recommended to route the sound into um the transcription software and i did it and it seemed magical when it started to work i thought oh this cannot be real (laughs) and it was so accurate and so you know, I, I thought, why not? I mean, so, you're not, especially, I mean, the the only issue and the only catch in all of this is confidentiality. Because honestly, I would love to do it for legal work because I do a lot of legal work and it's complicated. And I would love nothing more than being able to do this, but I can't. And uh, I haven't even asked the client because I know it's not, you know, I know that confidentiality is uh, vital for that industry, and therefore I, I don't even bring it up. But because the, the transcription is happening in the cloud, because the transcription is happening in the cloud, yeah. Yep. If there was a way to have transcription not in the cloud, then yeah, of course, I, I we could do it all the time. Yep. You would have to talk to your client and make sure. I mean, you might have. <laughs> stipulations about recordings or records and each client that's something that you would have to work out individually but i'm really glad to hear that you're thinking about confidentiality and that you're only using this in cases i mean i only do it for meetings that are already public you know all of the film work that i do is for film festivals i mean there's literally potentially millions of people watching this because you know the the film festivals put it up there and it's in their interest to have the greatest number of people watching it so you know I, i feel i'm doing them a favor if anything i know i know that recently you did this for another event and we actually have a recording of it that you generously shared for uh, a film a film event, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And yeah, yeah. in that case, you were working both ways between both languages. So I have mm-hmm. two questions about this. Um, were you using two different tools, one for the English and one for the Italian? Yeah, yeah, yeah I was. I, I had Otter and I had Web Captioner. And I was, uh, you know, looking at both of them, depending. So, of course, I, I, I don't, I don't toggle them on and off because it would be too much work. So... Whenever I speak Italian, Otter transcribes mumbo jumbo <laughs> <laughs> and, and vice versa. But whatever, actually, if anything, it helps me find the right spot very quickly because as soon as something makes sense, that, that's the right spot to begin. The only glitch, uh, I know that, not glitch, but you know, you kind of have to work with it, is that when you so people speak and and the software transcribes, and of course the page scrolls down. So they go on for a long time and you don't stop them because you don't need to. And so then you have to kind of go back to the beginning of the text. So that takes a while, but it's the same thing when you're doing a physical meeting and you have to flip through your notes, you know, I took this as a, (laughs) you you have to, as a a visual problem, you have to kind of, you know, go like this and like this and like this, you know, I've been at festivals where, you know, you go down 30 pages and and, and people are laugh, you know, and they're like, like, oh, will she know where she began? And will she ever be able to do all of this? (laughs) And will she be, exactly, you know, I'm sure all of us who do long consecutive have been in that situation, and especially in cinemas, people are not used to it. And they're like, there's no chance in hell she's going to be able to do that. So for example, when you're listening and taking some minimal notes, do you sometimes use your glossary or look things up or? You know, I'm thinking for, for the three or four events where I've used this professionally for real, I have not. Having said that, yes, there in, in practice, uh, there have been events where I did have a glossary and I had a, a window open with the glossary. And uh, 
And yeah, because I kind of stopped taking notes and went up to the, I mean, the speaker says something and I knew, I knew it was a technical term and I wasn't hundred percent sure. And so I had, I use interpret bank. And so I had my glossary on interpret bank and because I wasn't, I, I knew I could stop taking notes. I went and looked up my term. That was Extra really bonus. Great. As long as the software <laughs> is, is accurate enough and you're sort of listening to it in the background, I'm sure as you were going, uh, but Hey, we're interpreters. We excel at multitasking. Absolutely. And you know what I really love about this is that it gives me the time to think about solutions. I mean, um, you know, a lot of, when I do regular consecutive, I am so stressed out by taking notes and that by making sure I have accurate notes and that I have a lot of information in my notes because, you know, you know, I've been doing this 20 years and I have my symbols and all, but still I tend to write a lot. I tend to write in my notes a lot more than I probably should, but I'm terrified I will not remember things. I don't have resources to start thinking about my translation while I take notes. I don't. And when something is complicated, I, I flag it in my notes by saying, you know, Lilia, this, you're going to have to come up with something really creative. But when I do this, I'm like, wow, the whole time I can already think about my translation. So I feel I can do a much better job. Cool. So cool. Yeah. So I know for one of these recent assignments, you actually told the client that you were going to be doing this, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And so how do you <laughs> recommend you pitch this to client that, clients that you tell them, uh, hey, I'm going to be using speech recognition to help me do my job? Like, are they afraid that... That means you're actually no longer necessary. Like how, how do you how do you how do you pitch it? I've had colleagues who said, Oh, I feel that if I talk about speech recognition, people who don't know our industry are gonna think about automated translation. And the minute they see that you're transcribing something, they're gonna think you're having some software do your work for you. And um, it makes you look like less of a professional. So I understand this, I understand this, but I don't think, I think if you know the client and you can show them what you're doing, then it doesn't make you look less professional because they understand that you're still translating. They see that all you have is your text, your original, and you're still doing the translation yourself. So I don't understand why it would be less of a skill. So I think my client will understand that it's in their end user's best interest to have an accurate translation. And it doesn't matter whether I took notes or Otter took notes for me, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the client will understand. Um, it is less okay, less gratifying in a way. Yeah, you. Let's say the client now likes us for two skills: uh, the note taking and the translating. The translating should be more important, but the note taking comes into play. But I would argue that that it's maybe not as much about the note taking and more about the delivery. Absolutely. So it's about how you render their message and make it clear to the audience and and the interpreters i in my view who are best at consecutive are those who feel comfortable standing in front of a big crowd and who feel comfortable speaking and who have who speak eloquently and whether you're looking down at your notes to do that or using a transcription or using a recording which is another hybrid technique we're not talking about today there are lots of ways to do that and so and there, there's even been some research on this we won't go into that now but it basically shows that what the what the user is interested in is the whole package how how it comes across i mean i don't feel bad about it at all and i um you know the only reason i haven't really had a thorough discussion with my clients is simply that for these film festivals, often there's a lot of middle men, a lot of middle people. <laughs> uh, so the person who hires me is not actually the person who will be doing the interview. And so the minute I have a, an opportunity to physically see them the way I used to in a cinema and I can talk to them, I will. But um, you know, for these particular festivals, I figured 
there wasn't any benefit in, in letting them know what I was doing. Yeah, you know? and it'll be really interesting once you're doing on-site work to see if you're able to find a way to hook this up, to get the transcription, to work with that too. So we might have to have I another tried. conversation about that Actually, later. I can tell you a little bit. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, I you know, this this past couple of weeks, I've been working with a filmmaker, an Italian filmmaker who has a movie coming out uh, on Netflix later this year. And uh, he was doing all kinds of press and he was doing you know, in-person events in cinemas. And for those, I honestly don't feel... Mm, how can I say? I probably could trust the technology to do it on an iPad, but the thing is that Otter works really well on an iPad, but Web Captioner doesn't. And so I haven't really found a software that I trust as much as I trust Web Captioner that I can use on the iPad. It, it does require some setup, but it's totally doable. And I can see it honestly. If it was if it was up to me, I would just do it this way all the time now. Because I, I love whatever it, so. I have to, I, like I have to take notes now. I'm gonna have to do uh, a very high profile assignment next week, and uh, it's in person. And and I'm thinking, oh my god, I would give anything to be able to transcribe that. Yeah. Well, I think that 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 is the best note to close on. <laughs> I think we've gotten a really clear picture of what the experience was like for you and how much you enjoy using speech recognition software to um, do your job better. So that's that's great, Lilia. Thank you so much for, for joining us to talk about this. You're very welcome, Josh. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. I hope this helps. I'm sure it will. I hope many, many colleagues go out and start doing this and then report back and tell us how it's working for them.